Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And you know what? We always want to come to you at this time, but I'm not sure that we can actually play that right now. I've had a bunch of other stuff. I just had to reboot before the show, but that looks good. So we're going to try it. We're going to go to the queue. We're going to go to the sound. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And uh, what do we have here? Okay. Well, for the markets... Uh, let's go to the markets page here, which I have up. There we go. We'll update it so we can go. Uh, up about 1% on the S&P cash. NASDAQ's up about three-tenths. Dow's uh, one and a quarter. Eh, one and a quarter higher. Uh, Russell's uh, basically flat. Crude, uh, eh, let's call it uh, down a half a percent. Gold, eh, down a tenth. So do we have anything else going on? Well, options uh, expiration was on Friday, and almost always you have a period of what's known as options rollover. You get that uh, Monday and Tuesday following the Friday expiration, and it's where they have to get positions on and off of uh, the mar uh, out of the uh, market. And uh, sometimes it's uh, hedges. Um, anyway, so they like to push it up one day and down the next, and there's no real r rhyme or reason. Uh, but if you want to look at two days uh, other than Fed days, uh, where we're waiting until the Fed comes out with some kind of announcements, uh, it is about the most neutral two days uh, through history in the last 20 years. And that's just it. They're going to push it up one day. They're going to push it down about the same amount on the other. They're going to be uh, getting rid of some positions and adding some on when it's on one side and doing the same thing on the other. Then on Wednesday, you actually start seeing a lot of market action. Now, today, probably a little bit of this is uh, China-born. I was watching the news last night, as I often do, since I'm now an old man, and wake up in the middle of the night, turned on Bloomberg News, and I, the first thing I saw was, uh, without any context, I mean literally on there, uh, was this uh, kind of old uh, Chinese dude in the, looked like their parliament, um, patting Zing or Zai or however you pronounce his name on the shoulder. Uh, and then it came acro uh, across the crawl, um, so-and-so is leaving for health reasons. And all I could think of was uh, uh, the guy that used to be on Barney Miller, Abe Vigoda. Before that, he was in The Godfather. And uh, he just had to say, uh, just tell Michael it was just business. But uh, they said it was for health reasons <laughs> the guy was leaving. My guess is his health didn't matter after about... Uh, midnight last night and uh, in a two weeks down the line uh, we're going to probably see some kind of frozen icicle uh, representing him as he just died from a heart attack uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, yeah it's just it's just basically the mob isn't it at this point with him as the uh, big godfather of all godfathers of China so yeah I don't know what else you can say about it other than that, but uh, a lot of people being kind of freaked out about it. Uh, other things going on in the market that uh, caught my interest other than uh, uh, than that was uh, very late in the day on Friday, uh, the NASDAQ, uh, was it the NASDAQ? It may have been all the exchange. No, it wasn't. It was the SEC who was putting a halt to all China IPOs. Uh, there's been a lot of shenanigans going on in the last three to six months on those. So they're just assuming that they're frauds and going to pull the plug on those for a while. My guess is they do not come back. But uh, you know, I haven't heard a lot around TFNN about people trying to play those. But, uh, well, just, uh, you know, they just... Uh, 
just because uh, they can do it doesn't mean it's right. But again, that's the real problem with uh, the uh, exchanges where you can't actually go and have somebody look at the books. Uh, they can all be frauds. And of course, as long as enough palms get greased, it yeah. doesn't really matter much. Okay, let's go back here to the tiger's den. Because for some reason, I can't get on that. Uh, do, 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 okay, greetings. Uh, they went up and down today. Da, 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 test. Okay, so that's kind of it. Now, the first thing we want to do is see if there's anything bigger afoot in the stock market. But most of that has to do with um, this, but not really. Uh, we're doing a little bit uh, about the same kind of volume we were doing on Friday. Uh, and, you know, options expiration is not uncommon uh, to see that kind of stuff. We had, uh, let me go back here and look at it again. We had about 12.3 billion shares, which is not as much as you would think. I mean, it's a billion more than we've had on the way up and down. That may be all we get this fall or not may be no huge sign of strength it's a small sign of strength not a small it's not a sign of weakness but again i discount uh, everything that happens on options expiration day by about 50 percent so if i was going to say it was an eight then it's a four uh, when i come to a decision making there's just not that much there there Let's do a little history, and then when we come back, we'll do a lot of charts. We'll talk about earnings this week because that's really what we're waiting on now. As I said, uh, we're going to get into that, uh, and eh, just the big guys are out there. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is on this day in 2003, the Concorde supersonic jet makes its last commercial flight while being able to cross the Atlantic in about three and a half hours. Low passenger numbers and rising maintenance costs make uh, operating the Concorde unprofitable for British Airways and Air France. Uh, I was on it twice. I, would never, I wouldn't have ever paid for it myself. Uh, once to deliver some stuff uh, uh, for a company. And once, because I was stuck in um, Switzerland, uh, and I'd been uh, there for the week for a, a convention for broadcast television, uh, all I could remember is they had no air conditioning. It was miserably hot, and uh, one of my coworkers had booked us both into share a room. Now, this guy wasn't just like a chainsaw. It was like a chainsaw and a weed eater battling it out for supremacy. So I literally had no sleep that entire week and went home, tried to go home early, made a, uh, plans for a flight out at noon, showed up at 10 a.m., and the plane had already taken off. I don't, I'd never been in a place that it had it. Anyway, this day in 2003 was the last time you could uh, ride the Concorde. It's interesting playing. At least I got to write it twice. We'll be back in a minute. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? 
Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. And after the bell tonight, uh, we'll take a look at uh, Logitech with earnings uh, of course one of the big winners of everybody working at home but you only need so many web cameras and of course uh, they don't tend to blow up or uh, have a flat tire or anything so they work pretty much forever until you have to get a new one or the drivers are not available but that was only two years ago in the rearview mirror but keyboards mice everything and of course uh, with a uh, slowdown of new computers but even then most of the stuff that Logitech sells can just be put onto your new PC they still have uh, a good product line and I'd be interested in owning Logitech as soon as they hit some kind of bottom but no sign whatsoever just yet um, I think they're right after the bell I don't see anything here that says any different um, got a few other ones, but nothing really uh, that looks like it's going to uh, change anything. Uh, tomorrow after the bell, we're going to start getting the big ones, MSFT with Microsoft, General Electric, uh, Twitter, Visa, Google. We'll look at a few of these. Um, as I said, I like the setup on Friday for um, Microsoft and had a good options uh, expiration play on that we're a little higher now but again um you're going up against some bigger volume on the downside on the 7th of october we had uh, what's called 38 million shares to the downside um coming into it with about 15 now uh, even back on the 18th you had 26 so you're a little light uh but my guess is that they'll do okay and a lot of times right in a, in a bearish market that's all you have to do uh, you don't have to exceed. You just don't have to huge have a huge whiff. And right now, they're probably going to be okay. They may be 240 or something. Um, I'll see how they uh, trade tomorrow and get a better fix on it. But I wouldn't be surprised that like 240, um, 235 is kind of the low end of it. Maybe they come out with a lot more. It's hard to really think. They've really just launched a new, a lot of their new uh, hardware, which is a, a good addition to their earnings, but not the end-all, be-all. 
uh, but certainly looking interesting. But I can't imagine a whole lot to the upside unless everybody decides to dive on this one and get short. Uh, let's take a quick look about uh, how short people are right now. Uh, and I'm not talking Randy Newman short. I'm talking uh, short sells. Not too bad. you got about 1.4 days to cover with about only a half percent short. That was the last bi-monthly update. Um, as far as uh, daily short positions, fairly low, too. So, again, that's one of the reasons why I'm not expecting a whole lot to the upside. Uh, there aren't a lot of people that can get off sides on the short side. And, you know, are the numbers going to be horrible? Probably not. Uh, but, again, maybe 235, kind of on the low side, just on the disappointment. I could see it running whatever shorts are out, uh, are out of it um, fairly quickly and then pulling back a little bit. Um, I don't think the end is nigh anywhere close to that uh, kind of business, but uh, it's it. Um, Twitter, who knows about that? I don't really care. Uh, let's take a look at Visa. Uh, much more interesting uh, with uh, use of credit cards uh, getting a little higher. Uh, just a spinning top. And see, yeah, that's after market close tomorrow, too. Eh, just a spinning top. You're right against resistance, which is 195. Why? Oh, I've got the wrong thing here. Let's do this. It's not the gold fields. It's Visa. Okay, there we go. And see. Uh, okay. Just against that resistance level, you could break it. Um, next real resistance to the upside is 205. And support's going to probably be about 285 on it. So, again... A lot of risk, not a whole lot of reward on most of these. I didn't see anything that stood out. Uh, Google, uh, most of these social network companies uh, are problematic at best. Um, I did turn on the TV for about five minutes, and everybody was blabbing about uh, Metamucil. Uh, so we'll look at uh, Metamucil Facebook. Uh, but uh, certainly, I'm going to just call it sideways action. A lot of these lawsuits look like they're going to go against uh, these big social media companies uh, for YouTube, for Google, um, some of these other ones. Uh, probably the heyday of being able to do anything that they wanted to do is over. And even the air of invincibility on people like uh, Meta is uh, close to being over. Um I think one of the big wheels, I think it was O'Leary, I saw an article, uh, had actually sold his position out of it. Um, just got a big kind of spinning top going into earnings. Don't see a lot on that. Before the bell tomorrow, we also have uh, two. two, two. Uh, two, two, two. Okay. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're right up against, again, a lot of these are just set up this way. So you could get a little bit higher or break through resistance. General Electric's going through uh, the 13th of September gap down. That had 7.2 million shares. You got about 3.3, 3.4 million shares as we speak. So, again, you really, you know, the only thing that's saving a lot of these or even getting them to go a little bit higher uh, is uh, the short interest on people being off uh, or on the wrong side of these. Uh, not, you know, for General Electric being left for dead, um, actually acting okay, uh, only about two days to cover. So probably not a lot of upside on that one either, and not a lot of daily shorts uh, that we can chase down either. Uh, to, to Coca-Cola, I haven't looked at that one in a while. Uh, that one is also before market open. Uh, nice gap higher today. Don't think I don't show anything here. Estimate of 64 cents. Uh, 
nice gap, but about half the volume of uh, the last couple of days averaged out. So you're back up and again, right back into the resistance of these big days down. In this case on Coca-Cola, I'm looking at the um, September 27th down day that came in with 24 million shares and we're into that with 9.3. So that'll be, of course, um, before the open, so we'll get a good read on that one. Um, to to, to uh, other things. Oh, not going to have time this time. But when we come back, we'll look at Valero. And uh, that's a nice little pattern out there. Uh, they're uh, before the bell also tomorrow. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. There's anything exciting. Uh, Valero, unless something's horrible, this thing looks like it wants to go back and retest uh, one. 45.53, that is the June 8th high. And let's see, let's go back to this. Okay. And see if there's that. I mean, the energy was really bad off this high, 145.53. That was the uh, opening of the. Uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Uh, we're now getting to the point where you kick the can uh, down the road, uh, but uh, now the can's kind of kicking back on the SPR, even the talk about uh, move, doubling the amount of money or amount of uh, oil coming out uh, doesn't really affect uh, 
prices that much. Um, so what do you got? I think that if you've got any property in energy, uh, those are some ones that you just have to sit on your hands. Um, and unless the story changes, um, you just want to hang on to energy positions. Let's take a quick look at the XLE. I think probably after Christmas is when the fuel prices will probably, and the elections over, prices will probably go back up. Um, kind of the exact same pattern here. Um, you don't have as much energy on the way up. We were probably just over severely overbought into the June 8th high. Uh, but certainly, um, I think, uh, more an issue of supply and demand uh, than reading the charts uh, all the way at the moment. Uh, also tomorrow, 3M. And you're just a little higher on lighter volume. Uh, okay, Dave, uh, what would you think of uh, adding to T on pullbacks? Um, well, my pullback would be fairly big. You need to get back in here at about 1575 uh, to 16 bucks. That would be the only decent risk reward that I see. Uh, on this so if you can hang on uh, that probably is a huge pullback but you need to get back to probably that gap with lighter volume that had about 120 million shares so it won't be tough but that's where support would be on any of those uh, I don't see any reason to get out in front of that until it does uh, I'm going to be very greedy on buying pullbacks. Uh, Texas Instruments also, um, they don't really uh, tend to move the SMA, uh, SMHs as, as much, mostly just because of the cap weighting is far below uh, AMD and NVIDIA and Intel. Uh, but uh, and about half volume today on Texas Instruments. Resistance is fairly close. Uh, and resistance isn't futile. A little Star Trek reference there. Uh, anyway, um, 165, 167 probably on the upside. Just hard for me to see. Um, Toyota complained uh, about uh, Texas Instruments and some others in that they couldn't get the parts. Uh, so I'm going to say that at least on the low end, which Texas Instruments is, kind of the low end of the uh, market for uh, actually uh, the cost of the chips. So if you got to, you know, if you sell a chip for two bucks, the most you can make is two bucks if it costs you nothing to make. And that's really the problem. Um, uh, there was a guy, I want to think, uh, uh, he's got a site called Moore's Law is Dead, and there was another one out there. Anyway, they were... Uh, both uh, off and on, they've been trying to figure out the cost of making some chips. And uh, the chip that uh, AMD sells for 400 bucks costs 68 bucks to make and get out the door, maybe $71 with uh, packaging. And that's what you want. You sell one of those, you're making 339 bucks. No, yeah, 339 bucks on a $400 sale. Uh, it probably goes out at retail at 450 bucks, um, and maybe the customer was shipping and everything pays 480 for it. But that's the kind of margins you want. Um, Apple for iPhones has about 60% margins. Um, even if you have 100% margins, uh, you know, and it costs you a dollar to make, the, the problem is the most you've made is a buck. Now they sell a lot of chips, um, but just the overall problem is. Everyone they sell is such a small amount. Is it a good business? Yes. Is it? Are they ever going to take over AMD or Intel or the rest of them on uh, that? Eh, probably not. Um, but uh, you know they know their business. They stick to it. Uh, advanced micro devices just going sideways out here now. Um, that's a very interesting chart because it's building steam to do something absolutely 
huge. You've got three uh, major gaps lower. Um, and uh, we'll see if there's something else going on in it. But uh, I don't see any signal to, to get froggy just yet. But that would be it. Intel uh, for the next uh, probably 10 days has the fastest uh, desktop processors. Uh, that's until AMD comes out with their second version of their new processors, which actually have a lot more RAM cache, which will probably uh, leave Intel yet in the dust. So uh, it's always one of these things where um, you get faster and everybody else just has to get faster too. Intel is up a little bit. Had a nice day on Friday on most of the reviews. Uh, the problem I have is these things, uh, both AMD, but even worse uh, for Intel, are just, you, you better buy an air conditioner just for these processors until they get them a little bit farther down the road because these things are just like having a blow dryer on hot. Uh, they're putting out that much heat these days, and including um, not uh, in, uh, ignoring NVIDIA with their new video cards that do the same thing, um, where a computer could probably run on a 400-watt or 450-watt power supply. A lot of these uh, are going to need 1,250-watt power supplies. Uh, and uh, that's just like running a blow dryer. You're still using that uh, power uh, to some extent. Now, some of that uh, is a more efficient power supply, but again, you get into the, either the chips uh, or the video cards, and these things are just flamethrowers these days. I was talking to a guy that actually builds computers and um, was telling him about when I saw my first Cray computer and learned about Cray and what he did. Um, he was a pretty smart computer guy. He was a better plumber. And just being able to uh, liquid cool, he used liquid nitrogen and, uh, and uh, liquid helium. But just being able to cool these things is back to the same way in the early 80s that made Cray uh, the best in many and small supercomputers. Um, we're going back to that, which is just how do you keep these things cool as they uh, look for more um, technology to make these things more efficient. Um, well, we'll be back in a minute and continue going through earnings. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Our 
China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Richie Rich is head of uh, the Prime Minister of England now. Yeah, I get the joke. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, um, John in the Den uh, brings up uh, Turtle Beach along the lines of uh, Logitech. Um, this was kind of a little different, and they made a great deal of money on headphones, and then everybody started making them. Um, and, of course, once you buy a set of headphones... You know, they last five, ten years or something like that for what these guys. But everybody wanted to be online gaming and you needed to have headphones with a boom mic on it. And, uh, well, everybody bought them. And eventually they saturated the market. And then everybody else came along and made theirs. But uh, they were at the right place at the right time going into the pandemic. So uh, everybody ended up buying uh, headsets for them. Um they were, you know, I remember them, you know, 20, 25 years ago as the biggest purveyor of uh, decent audio cards for computers. Uh, but uh, they've continued to adapt. But uh, yeah, occasionally you'll just be in the right place, right time. And they were. But uh, I don't think anything really changes here for these guys in the near future. It's not a Logitech. Um, and I don't know of any new products that they have coming on uh, that we will see. Anyway, uh, to, 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 yeah, that's pretty much it. We've got Halliburton also uh, tomorrow. So we've got a lot of earnings in that, uh, in that oil space. All of them, to me, look good, even if the volume's a little light over here on the right hand shoulder just because everybody knows what happens when that SPR spigot goes off, and that is that gasoline prices will probably double. Um, okay. I have no idea on Biogen. I don't predict earnings on uh, biotechs. Uh, Novartis also. So that's kind of interesting. And that's it. Okay. Let's go on to Wednesday. Uh, we got Boeing, or I'm not going. Um, certainly, they've been able to deliver everything that they wanted to. Uh, it's just how much uh, that they could get out the door. Um, I got an email from somebody uh, that was uh, a little irate <laughs> that uh, many of us at TFNN actually uh, denigrate the giant cruise ships. And I guess it's okay for some folks. Um, but I know Tom Sales and a lot of other people are big boaters. And if you got your own boat, or in my case, I lived on one for eight years, and you know, I I, I uh, was at the helm of a 280-foot schooner once. Um, if you actually, you know, like sailing or being on a boat, being on a big cruise ship is just like a floating hotel, isn't it? So I can understand how a lot of people would like it. But I think if you're a pilot, you always imagine you're up there in the seat making the calls. 
you probably wish you were flying and not back in coach. Uh, if you were uh, doing anything, I don't know. It's kind of like a, a sports car, or I mean, a race car driver sitting in the stands. He, he always thinks he could probably do it better. But uh, I have no desire to get off in a, a port with 4,500 people. You just, it's just, I feel like an assembly line. I'd rather be, you know, during the pandemic, uh, my friends and I would go down uh, to a marathon and we had a bunch of uh, catamarans uh, that were being rented out because no one could fly down there and get in. And we were getting them for uh, 20% on the dollar or what they rent for today. That was a great time. But, you know, you rent a 50 foot catamaran um go out to the dry tour tugas you can make it out there in a day and back that was that's what i think is fun but nothing to denigrate it i know a lot of people won't ever want to be on a sail anything that size but uh it's hard to get excited about uh some giant monster that doesn't even move uh anyway just my thoughts and of course uh don't believe on the uh i want to get on the ss petri dish 877-927-6648. Anyway, back to Boeing, or I'm not going. Um, They've kind of gotten through the worst parts. Of course, as I said, the biggest problem is not them. Uh, It is pilots. And the question is whether or not next year, early next year, uh, they raise the retirement age to 67 uh, from 65 for pilots. Uh, in the United States, you need 1,500 hours before you uh, get into the right seat, the left seat for the captain, if you live in Lutz. Got to bring that up. Uh, and, of course, um, they're talking about either moving that down some. Uh, in Europe, the rest of the world, it's 300 hours. So if you ever wonder why our records tend to be much, much better uh, than the uh, records around the rest of the world for safety, um, experience is a great uh, equalizer uh, for safety. Um, let's see. Anyway, um, could you go higher? Uh, let's see how many people have been shorting this. That looks like this is one where a lot of people could be, I think, on the wrong side. Eh, it's okay. Eh, only about 1.4 days to cover. So not enough to get me interested. Um, top side, probably about 155. Downside, maybe 135. Okay, uh, Ford Motor Company. Um, they've had a lot of problems in this quarter uh, with quality. Um, I know some people in the uh, automotive repair part of the business and they're coming in with all kinds of stuff. I know they've got 40,000 cars uh, missing parts that are just sitting waiting to get another part to finish them up and ship them. Um, I don't know what that looks like. Here we are in October. So I guess they're just going to call them 2023s? Don't know. I'm sure they try to get that done. But I'm wondering if there isn't going to be a huge pop, especially... um, now with higher interest rates on cars and all that f- uh, feeling through, um, these guys may actually want to take a lot of the losses in this quarter. Um, I wouldn't be very, you know, maybe I'm wrong on this. Top side, they announced something that I can't see happening at all. Uh, at 14, uh, to the downside, you could be back down to uh, in the $10 range. Okay, what else do we have? A line, United Rentals, Boots, Millennium, Waste Management. Take a quick look at Waste Management. We come up. Oh, going to break here. Well, we just got a couple minutes. We'll look at Waste Management when we come back. Um, basically up to 3800 on the S&P Cash. Be back in a minute.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we come back... Uh Getting to take a look at uh, what's going on here. Well, we've got decent volume, but not huge. Um, it's good. We've got a market that's higher. Pretty much in the uh, Goldilocks part of the year uh, for uh, sentiment. That is, uh, markets going higher into the end of the year. On the high end, maybe 4,100. We've been talking about that for two months. I don't see us going back up to any kind of highs. It, you know, weirder things have happened. Maybe it's just uh, China becoming uh, an unfriendly, uh, the unfriendly skies to fly. Uh, maybe, you know, we'll sit down, uh, Hang Seng down, what, 6% today. Um, maybe that'll start to fade. But I think a lot of people uh, got kind of an ick factor with investing over there maybe that money's going to come over here for a little while uh, we got bigger problems as i said uh, my guess is that uh, as soon as that uh, strategic petroleum reserve uh, gets turned off we're going to start seeing some real high gas prices after the elections uh, how fast i'm not exactly sure yet but probably by christmas so we've got uh, a few things going on, but that doesn't mean we can't rally into Christmas. Uh, and will it be a huge deal? 
Now, if we move 300 points in the next uh, two months, I don't think anybody would say anything. They wouldn't say it's the uh, biggest uh, rally of all time, but maybe that takes us into next year where we have more modest ex uh, expectations into the year. Um, tomorrow is the second day of options rollover. I expect us to give up a lot uh, of what we had today and then um, start moving, maybe get some kind of trend into fund buying, which starts a, a week from today. So when you can, not when you have to, we will return like a bad rash tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.